Imagine waking up one morning to find that the streets you've known your entire life are slowly disappearing underwater. For the residents of Jakarta, Indonesia, this isn't a dystopian fantasy. It's a harsh reality. Jakarta is sinking at an alarming rate, with parts of the city subsiding by as much as 25 centimeters annually. This crisis has prompted the Indonesian government to embark on a monumental project, the construction of the Garuda Seawall. This ambitious plan aims to protect the city from the encroaching sea, but the journey is fraught with challenges. Stick around, because by the end of this video, you'll understand why Jakarta's struggle against nature is a fight that affects us all. The Indonesian government is proactively striving to safeguard its cherished capital by reviving an ambitious project, the Garuda Seawall. This monumental undertaking, with an initial budget of a staggering $10.5 billion, forms part of a comprehensive 40-year plan. Once completed, the seawall will be a marvel unlike any the world has witnessed. But why is Jakarta the fastest sinking megacity on the planet? The explanation is multifaceted. Firstly, the city hosts a plethora of towering structures. Boasting the highest number of shopping malls globally and ranking 12th in skyscraper count, these edifices exert immense pressure on the underlying soil. Secondly, chronic water shortages have necessitated extensive groundwater extraction, exacerbating subsidence. For decades, countless deep wells have been drilled in pursuit of water, further destabilizing the terrain. Lastly, Jakarta's location on the northwest coast of the formidable Java Sea compounds its woes, with sea levels reportedly rising by as much as 200 centimeters annually. This perennial menace manifests in devastating floods and tsunamis, wreaking havoc on lives and properties. Flood-related damages in this coastal metropolis are estimated at $133 million annually, with projections soaring to an astounding $637 million in the coming decades. The stakes are dire. Experts warn that if current trends persist, one-third of Jakarta could be underwater by 2050. Alarming signs are already evident, with some areas sinking over 4 meters between 1997 and 2005. Immediate action is imperative to avert a catastrophic future for the city's more than 10 million residents. To address this colossal challenge, the Indonesian government devised several strategies. One proposal involved relocating the capital from Java to Borneo, envisioning a $34 billion avant-garde city named Nusantara. Another measure was the prohibition of groundwater extraction in Jakarta. Yet, the most groundbreaking solution remains the construction of a gargantuan seawall encircling the entire city. When initially proposed in 2010, this plan met with vehement opposition from environmental groups and local politicians who contended it would disrupt livelihoods and devastate marine ecosystems. A coalition of environmental and social organizations, dubbed Mal di Sagoro, argued that rather than mitigating land subsidence and coastal flooding, the seawall would exacerbate problems for the region's inhabitants and environment. They warned it could constrict fishing areas, imperiling the livelihoods of those dependent on the sea, and destroy coastal habitats essential for ecological balance and protection. Despite these objections, Jakarta's plight has worsened, prompting the resurrection of the seawall project over a decade later. As the city grapples with its sinking reality, the revitalized Garuda Seawall Initiative symbolizes a bold attempt to stave off disaster and secure Jakarta's future. Indonesia's Coordinating Minister for Economic Affairs, speaking at a seminar on the Seawall Project, underscored its critical necessity. He revealed that sections of Jakarta subside up to 25 centimeters annually due to excessive groundwater extraction and urban development. We need the giant seawall to halt the land from sinking and prevent the incessant flooding from the sea," he stated. He further explained that the project would be executed in three phases, extending beyond 2040, with the first two stages requiring $10.5 billion in funding. However, he did not disclose the financial requirements for the third phase. According to the construction blueprints, the Garuda Seawall will extend 25 miles in length and stand 80 feet high, situated in the northern bay of Jakarta. These colossal barriers will be strategically constructed on the east and west sides of the bay. To entice private investors, the surface of this grand seawall will be transformed into a hub of urban development, featuring amenities such as an airport, a harbor, a toll road, residential and industrial areas, 
waste treatment facilities, a water reservoir, and green spaces, all within an expanse of approximately 4,000 hectares. Additionally, the project will include 17 artificial islands, which, upon completion, will constitute a new section of Jakarta, anticipated to accommodate 2 million people. The deadline for the completion of both ends of the seawall is set for 2040. Meanwhile, the construction of a 30-kilometer long river and beach dike along the Jakarta coast is underway. Initiated in October 2014, this project aims to extend and reinforce the existing dike that was overrun during the catastrophic Jakarta flood of 2007. The completion deadline for this segment is 2030, and the entire seawall project is projected to be finalized by 2050. A freshwater reservoir within the Garuda seawall will be constructed to address Jakarta's critical water supply issues, which currently depend on groundwater extraction. This reservoir will collect and store rainwater and river water from Jakarta's 13 rivers, providing clean water for its residents. The pressing question is how the Indonesian government plans to raise the $10.5 billion needed for this colossal project. Realizing they couldn't fund the endeavor alone, the government wisely sought private investment. According to Erlanga Hartardo, Coordinating Minister of Economic Affairs, numerous investors are interested in participating through a public-private partnership scheme. He noted that construction on the seawall had already begun, albeit in an unintegrated manner, dating back to the groundbreaking ceremony in October 2014 as part of the National Capital Integrated Coastal Development NSICT, Master Plan, also known as Garuda. The project has garnered international support, with the Dutch and South Korean governments pledging a combined $19 million for feasibility studies for the second and third phases of the seawall. However, skeptics argue that the seawall could exacerbate Jakarta's subsidence issues. Critics like Parid Ridwin Yudin, a sea and coastal campaign manager at the Indonesian Environmental Forum, warn that the seawall might obstruct the 13 rivers flow, turning Jakarta Bay into a massive sewage pool. They argue that the project doesn't address the root causes of land subsidence. In response to these concerns, Mr. Erlanga assured that ecological studies had been conducted and environmental issues prioritized. He emphasized that the seawall would have gates to allow water flow, thus mitigating any potential ecological disruption. Additionally, he highlighted the necessity for collaboration among all parties to address land subsidence issues. The Marine Affairs and Fisheries Ministry will oversee the spatial planning process for the seawall along Java's northern coast. Despite significant criticism, especially from Indonesians uncertain about the project's efficacy, the Garuda seawall represents a substantial step in the right direction. The government cannot afford to passively watch as Jakarta sinks, and if a seawall can help, it is a plausible solution. What do you think of this project? We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments section. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more updates. Thank you for tuning in.